Organizations everywhere have adopted a continuous delivery methodology in order to increase the quality of the applications that they build and run while decreasing the amount of time it takes to bring fixes and features from the idea phase into their customers' hands. Zen offers a rich collection of products, patterns, and services to help you reap the benefits of continuous delivery in your PHP applications lifecycle. In the Zen Continuous Delivery Blueprint, available at zen.com blueprint, we identify four general phases in the continuous delivery lifecycle. Continuous integration, release automation, infrastructure automation, and application management. Zen Server and the Continuous Delivery Patterns offer features and integrations so that you can build a truly integrated continuous process. The implementation specific options are nearly infinite and you can tailor your usage to the specific tools and processes that your organization needs. So let's take a look at an example use case for Zen Server and continuous delivery. The first phase of the continuous delivery lifecycle is continuous integration. Most developers are familiar with continuous integration servers like Jenkins and Bamboo. And Zend is creating a series of integration patterns so that the workflows between your continuous integration server and Zend server can be truly seamless. Starting with Zend Server 6, Zend Server is completely API enabled, and this enablement was specifically designed with complete automation in mind. So let's take a look at what continuous integration with Zend Server and a continuous integration server, in our case Jenkins, might look like. In this example, we'll be using an application called GotCMS. GotCMS is a content management system that's based on Zen Framework. You'll note here that our Zen Server staging implementation has a GotCMS application instance already defined. So let's suppose that we want to make a change to this admin screen in our GotCMS implementation. The continuous integration phase of a continuous delivery process begins with the developer's code. A developer, having made some desired change to his or her code, checks that code into a version control system. In our example, the version control system is Git, but you can use pretty much any VCS that you choose. This code milestone is the entry point into the continuous delivery lifecycle and kicks off, if you will, the continuous delivery process, or more specifically in our case, a Jenkins continuous delivery pipeline. Here, you can see the entire pipeline visually represented with all the steps involved. We'll break down each step of the process as we move through the entire pipeline. Here, we'll kick off the, inter the continuous integration pipeline with a commit to our version control system. In this example, we're using the Git integration in Zen Studio, but it doesn't really matter what instigates the commit. If your IDE or editor of choice has a version control system integration, then great. If not, you can simply use the command line to commit your changes uh, into your version control system and thereby kick off the continuous integration pipeline. As I mentioned, in our case, we're using the Git integration in Zen Studio. So we'll enter the appropriate commit message and click the commit and push button to send the changes to our Git CVS. Then the repository gets updated. And once the push is complete, the continuous integration server, Jenkins in our case, will take over uh, depending on how you have configured it to understand changes to the VCS. So it might be that you've configured Jenkins to be event driven. Uh, maybe it's an interval polling system. So you check the CVS for updates every X number of minutes, or it could even be a manual process. Then the build pipeline process begins. You notice the first step has successfully completed. That's the pull from the Git CVS, uh, VCS. When the code checkout is complete, then unit testing steps can begin, and the defined suite of unit tests for our project get executed. Assuming that all tests complete successfully, and you can see in our case uh, that the indication in the Jenkins pipeline has turned from blue to green, which indicates that there were uh, no unexpected errors. We're ready then to enter the release automation phase of our process for packaging and deployment, in our case, to a staging server. Now, Zen Server has always included incredibly rich packaging and deployment functionality. But starting with version 6, all of these features in Zen Server are fully exposed via web APIs. The Zen pattern for continuous integration with Zenkins is an example of using your continuous integration server to access those functionalities in Zen Server in a fully automated and bi-directional way. 
The Jenkins pipeline uses one of those APIs to call our Zen server instance and instruct it to start the packaging process for our application. These calls can be asynchronous. So while Zen server is doing the packaging and preparation of our application for deployment, we may want to run some additional tasks uh, alongside that packaging process like code analysis. In this example, we're running uh, a code compliance analysis with PHP Code Sniffer and then publishing a report of the results. This takes place in parallel to the packaging processes being handled by Zen Server. When packaging of the application is complete, Zen Server begins the process of deployment to our staging server. Now, take a look at this Jenkins pipeline and note the integration between Jenkins and Zen Server. Zen Server has advised Jenkins that the packaging process and the deployment to staging process have successfully completed. You can see the green status indicators. The Jenkins pipeline has been updated to reflect that status. You can see that deploying, that deploying the code coverage report is the step that will happen next. Note also that the last step in the pipeline, deployment to production, has been visually changed to be indicated by Jenkins that it's ready to be run. But in our case, it's not automatically run because we've chosen to make kicking off the actual push to production a manual step so it can be performed uh, by an operations professional. And this demonstrates that you can configure the workflow to meet whatever the specific, specific needs of your organization are. So let's drill down a little bit on deployment challenges. An interesting integration point between Zen Server and your continuous integration server has to do with the inevitable differences between deployment targets. For each release, that we, uh, we want to use one and only one package, but deployment to different environments like test, staging, and production will inevitably have subtle differences like database access credentials that we need to consider during the deployment process. So here, you can see that we've defined a step in our Jenkins pipeline for deployment to staging specifically. If we drill down into the configuration details for this step, you can see how we define specific properties for this step in deployment specifically to the staging environment. Zen server's pa packaging and deployment features can be fully customized via parameters and event-driven hooks so that you can tailor the process with whatever target-specific details that your environment requires. Now that the Jenkins pipeline process for this commit has completed, we can see the new deployment details in the Zen server application definition. Note here the updated time uh, of the staging server for our application. Now if we navigate to the part of the GOT CMS application that we changed and we refresh the view, we'll see that the UI has been updated with the change that we made automatically pushed through automation into our staging server. If we check back with the Jenkins pipeline view, we can see that the code coverage report was successfully deployed as well. But note, we still haven't pushed the new version of our application into production. That's the manual step that I mentioned earlier. And of course, Zen Server has always had strong features in regards to publishing, packaging and publishing, and especially when we're considering the deployment into complex deployment scenarios. So here's the Zen Server definition of our GOT CMS application in production. Note that while our staging environment had only one server node, our production environment has four server nodes. When we kick, kick off the deploy to production step in our Jenkins pipeline, Zen Server will, at Jenkins' bequest, take the deployment package that it created earlier in the pipeline process and deploy it identically to all four of the servers in our production environment. We can monitor the progress in the Zen Server user interface. Note here in this display the indication that Zen Server is preparing to deploy our application. Once application is complete, we can see visually in the Zen Server user interface that the status has been changed to deployed and the uh, deployed on date and time have been updated. Back in Jenkins, we see that our continuous integration pipeline is all green. Everything went as we expected. So, we, what we've seen here is that uh, Zen Server integrating with Jenkins for continuous integration and release automation is very seamless and well integrated. But what happens when our application requires an infrastructure update? So we're not just going to update the application itself, but we need to change the infrastructure that our application runs on. For example, what happens if the four nodes in our production cluster just are no longer enough to meet the demands of our application's increasing use? 
Survey data tells us that a major cost and cause of difficulties when running applications in production can be traced to differences, sometimes quite subtle differences, in the stack below the application in their execution environments. The infrastructure automation portion of continuous delivery lets us define a consistently repeatable way to allocate new servers, nodes, or instances so that we can grow our application's execution environment quickly and with as little friction as possible. So how this will work is that in production, in some way, our environment would tell us that the existing allocations for our production environment are reaching a threshold at which the quality of service that our application offers are going to start to suffer. Exactly how this status gets communicated to us will be dependent on our environment. It might even be a manual operation based on some projected increase in use. Perhaps we're going to engage in an advertising campaign that's going to drive a whole bunch of new users. So uh, in our case, uh, we've re let's assume that we've received such a notification and decided to add a couple of additional nodes to our production environment for our application. The first pattern in Zen's series of uh, infrastructure automation patterns is the Zen pattern for infrastructure automation with Chef. The pattern includes a complete Chef cookbook that automates the configuration of all of the dependencies our application will need on a new node in our production cluster. In our use case, we'll kick off the process by manually running a shell script as you see here, but it's certainly possible that you could automate this part as well if you chose to do so. You can see here how the Chef integration with Zen Server is being exposed in the Zen Server interface. Our shell script has invoked Chef with the Zen Pattern Cookbook. Chef has done its infrastructure configuration and, through one of those Zen Server APIs, Chef has instructed Zen Server to fire up those instances, deploy the application to the new nodes, and then add those new nodes to the production cluster. You can monitor the progress of that new node addition in the Zen Server user interface. Here, you can see Zen Server deploying the application to the server Web Standby 1, which will become one of the new production nodes in our Zen cluster. Once the application has been successfully deployed, you can see that both application servers have been added to the cluster with no errors. Of course, Despite our best efforts, sometimes things just don't always work as planned when our application is running in the real world. Zen Server has excellent application monitoring, eventing, and alerting mechanisms, but operations teams really want a single dashboard that can serve as the window into what's happening in real time in their production environment. This means monitoring not just the applications, but everything in the stack below those applications as well. To facilitate this, Zend is offering patterns for monitoring, beginning with the Zend pattern for monitoring with Nagios. Nagios is a well-known and widely used open source monitoring system. Here, you can see inside Zend Server some of the application level warnings that Zend Server has been configured to monitor on our production application. These sorts of things are conditions that the operation folks probably want to be aware of as an indication to the state of health of the applications running in their production environment. Note that these events are tunable at the very detailed level and that the monitoring takes place independently against every node in the production cluster. For instance, here we have a warning of a slow request execution from our gutcms application. Now, this is in the Zen server user interface, but again, the production folks want a single pane of glass, that one main window that gives them at a, an, an at-a-glance view into the health of their production environment and all of the applications running in it. So using the Zen pattern for, pattern for monitoring with Nagios, Zen server application events can be surfaced in the Nagios monitoring views. Here you see that Zen server has reported to our Nagios monitoring instance that the server web active one has experienced a problem. If we want to, we can drill down and look at all of the events coming from that specific uh, web active one node uh, as recorded by Zen server. Then the proper operations team uh, could choose to research the problem themselves or uh, advise the development team to use their read-only access to the production environment to, be to begin root cause analysis on this specific problem. So what you've seen here is a really quick view of one specific example of implementing the Zen Blueprint for Continuous Delivery using the first wave of Zend integration patterns. Zend and its partners will continue to expand on the collection of integration pattern offerings, and we encourage you to begin your continuous delivery experience right now. 
You can get started by downloading the Zen Blueprint for Continuous Delivery and the Integration Patterns at zen.com slash blueprint.